Hey, it's Alex with uh, Botmation Rising. Today, we're going to take a countertop microwave and give it voice activated control features and add a little bit of personality using a Raspberry Pi. Hot chocolate, please. Coming right up. Whoa, it's actually working. Whoa. What the heck is this? Alice, what is this? Hot chocolate. <laughs> um this is not hot chocolate. Alex, you ask for high temperature chocolate. <sighs> hot chocolate is a drink made with chocolate, Alice. Okay, I'll remember for next time. <laughs> Thank you, Alice. Okay, so it's not a food replicator, but we definitely voice activated it and gave it a little bit of personality. To give you a basic overview, we have a Raspberry Pi, some control relays, a standard countertop microwave, speaker, and a microphone. Okay, let's remove all the screws. Let's go ahead and start opening up our microwave and get to the control board first. This is your control board. It handles everything about the microwave. The control board handles all your functions to the microwave from everything to the number being pressed on your keypad to handling your instructions. Let's go ahead and remove the control board and see how it connects to the keypad. Right underneath our control board we have a uh, black and white strip um, connection here and that's basically how it goes from the keypad to your control board. Okay, so we turn our control board around. You can see the, uh, the bare leads at the very top here uh, label connects to keypad. That's that's how the keypad gets a signal connected straight to the control board, and from there it gets processed. Follow the uh, the leads. You can see that there's these little lines that go from one section of the board to another section that looks pretty identical to the top, except these right here are your control leads. It's basically how it connects within the board from the keypad to the actual, uh, let's say, the CPU of the board. So the next step is to figure out what all these leads do. What I did was because there was an LCD screen and a keypad section, I knew that this circuit board most likely had one side handling the LCD display screen and the other side probably handles the button pushing. So using a piece of tape, I cover up half of the circuit board that connects back to the keypad and put the system back together and see what was working and what was not. So that quickly eliminated half of the, uh, the pins. And then following from there, uh, what I did is started soldering some wires up to the board. One of the easiest ways to solder something to a circuit board is to use a uh, easy little fixture like this. Using the, a uh, a Cat5 cable, you can actually take out the individual wires, which is just 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 enough to handle a low voltage uh, application like this, and individually wire up each lead. Um, this will make it a much simpler to figure out what each button pushes does later on in the section. Uh, the hardest part of soldering in this particular control board is that uh, the spaces are so tight. You have to be really careful to make sure none of your solder or leads are touching the next one over, otherwise you would just end up creating a permanent short circuit between the two leads. Now comes the hard part. 
you want to power up your control board without installing it back into the microwave in order to measure the voltage levels of all your leads to see what you're working with. In my case, uh, all my leads were under 5 volt DC, so fair, it's fairly safe to play with, with minus the fact that I may end up breaking my control board, but I'm okay with that. So what you want to do now is basically get a notepad, pen, and just start crossing the wires between, let's say, a red and a green, a uh, brown and a black, just to see how the microwave reacts. Um, keep in mind, you want to keep your microwave door open so that your microwave doesn't automatically just start on you. And you may want to uh, power cycle it once in a while just to keep it at a safe level. Okay, so basically to do this project, what you need is to create your own relays that can control the keypads we need a Raspberry Pi 3 Model B you need your own little breadboard so for the breakdown of the relays is basically one of these 3 volt DC relays that Raspberry Pi can handle you got your own little miniature terminals that solder on to your own little board here so what I did was basically just put the terminals on here, put the relays in between, solder the pins up on the bottom like so. So on the keypad it's essentially basically taking two wires and then they just have to touch. So in order to do that for the Raspberry Pi, you need to use a 3 volt relay. So the 3 volt relay is basically to be driven by the Raspberry Pi to drive one side of the relay to basically close the contact which essentially is the same thing as making the two wires touch. So what we're going to do is basically figure out what color wire went where and then just wired up the two sides of the wire to here and then the other side through the Raspberry Pi using its own outputs, GPIO outputs, on one side and the ground on the other one. Let's go ahead and wire up a Raspberry Pi to our relays. So we went ahead and downloaded from the Raspberry Pi website the GPIO numbering system. So what we're going to use is the physical numbering system so that we know exactly where on the pins we're going to be wiring up to and how we're going to program it later. So how we knew which pins it went where. Um, on previous studies, I've already did the, all that work and did all this to figure out which exact wires we need to wire up to our Pi. Let's plug in the microphone. Okay, this is the Python script for the Raspberry Pi. Here we are importing GTTS, uh, speech recognition, time, and GPIO. The speech recognition is used to record your voice when you say something to give it your Raspberry Pi a command, and in turn it returns a text string which you then just basically parse out to determine what you want to do with the command and then once you have figured it out you then basically tell the GPIO pin to do something um, such as hitting the one hitting the zero and then starting the microwave um, next is the GTTS which basically allows you to type any string you want and then that basically sends back to the Google server just like your speech recognition and it will in turn return an audio file which you can play uh, which in our case is the voice of Alice. And that's basically it. So I hope you enjoyed that, the video and learned something. Uh, feel free to say something in the comments. Look forward to the next time.